Adventurous and Sunday School and we thank you all for for making us to be here our parents asanteni kwa kuleta kutuleta kwa church ni wengi sana wako huko nje wana randa randa lakini si mmetuleta church thank you and thank you a lot ah uh, kama iko the wageni wanaiza simama we acknowledge them. Echo again. Sisi ndio wana Sunday school. Thank you. Na this is the center. Naizo salimiana. Masi 
mwangi nimeokoka Yesu ni Bwana na tuko na Sunday school Wana Sunday school welcome the fruit is yours Sunday school Sunday school with the song God again. My name is Maxwell Gie Mungai and we are Sweet Sunday School and we have a song. Thank you. Sweet Sunday School to begin my coffee. Now to welcome the adventurers with the skit and a song. Adventurers. It is adventurers ready to present for you a skit and a song. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Thank you.
for the kingdom of heaven has come. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. Blessed are the peacemaker, for they shall... Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall... For they shall be comforted. Blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, for they shall be. Teacher, I am worried about my family. We have no food or anything to drink. We have no food or shelter. Teacher, I am worried. Don't worry about life, what to eat or drink. Is your body more important than life? Is your body more important than, than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor harvest, but God provides for them. Teacher, teacher, teach us how John the Baptist told his disciples how to pray. Pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, our Lord be the name, the kingdom come, the will be done on earth, as it is done in heaven. Give us this our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Teacher, how can I inherit the kingdom of God? Sell all your properties, give them to the poor, then come follow me. You said I sell all my properties, give them to the poor, then come follow you. I can't. How now? It's easier for a camel to enter through an eye of a needle, but it's hard for for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Teacher, let me go bury my father, then come follow you. Let dead bury themselves, then follow me. Ask. Ask. Given unto you. Seek. And you shall find. Knock. And the door will be opened. Ask, and you shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. When Jesus said yes, Nobody can say no. When Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. Ah 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 at one age you see power and the Holy Spirit. My witness in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Ah, 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 and be my witness in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the Sale.
today and Samaria at the end of the earth. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God again. Waklapi ni adiao. The next people are the teenagers, all the teens, with a song and a dance. Teenagers.
never ending praise may I incense trust let us bless the Lord every day and night never ending praise may our incense trust let us bless the Lord have a dance.
Jason. Jason, send me up a place of me. No, me papa, go and do some new thing. Welcome Elda Karumba, the Matangazo. I don't know whether it's still morning or I just wish I was one of them. Oh, kids don't know how to pretend. Watoto akija hapa anafanya we uone usione yeah and it's upon you yeah yeah atafanya tu kile ambacho anajua it's all for the glory of god and i want to welcome each one of you uh, to this wonderful sunday service tumebarikiwa mpaka mahali ambapo tumefika ni wangapi wamebarikiwa bwana asifiwe bwana asifiwe yes ndiko nimeona kama tuliko wageni wengine naona wamai was so much in a hurry to sit down sijui kulikuwa na mgeni alibaki hakusalimiana kulikuwa nimeona nimeona kama kuna wengine but it's all the same oh, oh, i mean all the same uh, mumekaribishwa mume sana na mumebarikiwa sana kuwa katika ibada yetu ya siku ya leo ni siku ya watoto hivyo ndivyo watoto wetu wanavyojivinjari sio kama wale wa kule nje wetu wanamtukuza Mungu. Situwapigie makofu watoto wetu. Asante sana pia kwa sababu ya kuwapatia hiyo nafasi na uongozi wa kanisa. Watoto wetu wanakuwa na wanaendelea kukua vizuri. Niwakaribisha wote ambao wamefika, ambao ni wenyeji na pia wageni. Wageni wetu tunapotoka tusiwe na haraka. Naweza kunena mawili matatu na nyinyi na pia labda tupate kikombe cha chai na kwa hivyo ungemuomba ndugu yetu Peter Kim simama tu inue mkono na mpatia jukumu la kushughulikia wageni siku ya leo kwa hivyo tukitoka wageni wetu tumuone ndugu yetu na kwa hivyo tusiwe na haraka sana ya kutoka uh, this, uh, the second uh, announcement is just a reminder of the ongoing uh, project Development Project Committee ambayo imepanga takuwa na fundraising coming Sunday imekuwa kitangazwa so there's just a reminder na pia kulungana na matoleo vili ambavyo ya mewekwa council members wote wanaombwa kutoa 30,000 
viongozi wote na kamiti members wanaomba kutoa 1015 kila moja church members ni 1800 wa toto wanafunzi ni shilingi 1100 na hao watoto wetu wadogo ni shilingi 100 naweza kupeana pesa zako kupitia kwa treshara wetu ambaye ni mama Mungai tumeye tuko naye hapa tunamjua na pia Uh, tuko na account ambao ni ya, ni ya mchango this is not the church account unajua kuna account mbili za cooperative this is not the church account lakini kuna account ya mchango kwa hivyo unaweza kutoa pesa zako kutukulipa pesa zako kupitia kwa hiyo account ya cooperative bank siku ya jumapili ndio tutakuwa na mchango na kisha baadaye tutakuwa na open air meeting saa nane venue will be communicated later on sunday Tunaombwa kuambatana na hao mission team, prison worship team and technical team to remain after this first service. Uh, siku ya leo ni siku ya watoto na kama vile tulikuwa tumejulishwa siku uh, ya Jumapili iliyopita ya kwamba tuweze kuwa support na uh, shilingi moja kila mmoja wetu na naamini kwamba tumekuja tukua tumejitayarisha. Juma Ijumaa ijayo Uh, kutakuwa na regional youth kesha ambayo itakuwa hapa kwetu kanisani tumebarikiwa sunday tulikuwa na uh, presbytery rare na ilikuwa hapa na sasa tuko na kesha ambayo pia itakuwa hapa tarehe nane na hawajaandika ni kuanzia saa ngapi lakini i believe it's from nine right yeah from nine tutakuwa na umkesha wa vijana regional youth kesha uh, wababa wote tunaombwa tuweze kubaki baada ya hii ibada na mkutano wa wamama all of these presbytery get together will take place this sunday uh, katika kan, i mean saturday 9 katika kanisa letu la kiganjo kuanzia saa nne asubuhi na kwa hivyo wamama wote mnaulizwa kupanga ili muweze kuhudhuria bwana awabariki sana at us and our teachers please msemi hi ndio wajui all our teachers makofi mazuri 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 uh, ametuendeleza vizuri how many of us are happy how many of us are happy you you feel hiyo uh, eh? Yo, oh baby baby utoto utoto. Haleluya. Lakini hivyo ndivyo tuko. Tunahudumu pale kwa madarasa letu tukiwa tumefurahia namna hiyo na Mungu ni mwema. Bwana asifiwe sana. Uh, I must uh, acknowledge the presence of the minister of, of the word and the minister of our souls in this church our father and our presbyter and our pastor. Minister Ben Gaitho Makofi Mazuri pamoja na mam for giving us the opportunity to serve in this altar as children na tumeshukuru sana thank you so much god bless you so much uh, i don't want to talk much i want just to bring the ministers of the word and i say the ministers we are going to have two ministers of the word in one service today one being uh ni ni ni, ni kijana mdogo na mwingine akiwa mwalimu na kwa hayo yote ni maana yake naamini kwamba tumebarikiwa sofa mtazidi kutuvumilia bwana asifiwe sana kule mmesikia kidogo tuko na mulchki mmesikia kidogo tume wakikui wanasema kufashia kidogo tu Uh, tunaomba ya kwamba mkaturehemu ama mkatuvumilie bwana asifiwe sana eh, si kazi rahisi kuwa na wale vijana pale ama wale watoto wachanga pale na kuweza kuwa na kuwafunza na kuwapeleka vile ambavyo tu wamapeleka lakini tunashukuru Mungu bwana asifiwe sana yes they call me teacher kim um, patrick kemani dikon ama baba Jackson na tunashukuru Mungu. Bwana asifiwe sana. Mama Jackson is not together with us today. 
uh, she has been on and off like into Shukuru Mungu Bwana asifiwe sana I want us to stand up and now we want to bring the minister of the world the first minister hatutanena uh, kwa urefu sana mtatuvumilia and I see you is this Mr Kenywa <laughs> karibu sana <laughs> karibu karibu hatutanena uh, kwa urefu sana sisi darasani kule tunaamini ukiwa umezungumzia watoto sana aini it should be 40 minutes every class every lesson ina take 40 minutes and uh, we are going to make sure kwamba tume maintain hiyo dakika sio mingi sana bwana asifiwe sana so tell the lord something about the word today that you minister to your heart through the ministers that he has prepared that uh, the word will have an opportunity and a chance in your heart and it will come and change and transform you the word is ready and he has prepared his word hallelujah hallelujah our lord and our father we thank you because you have prepared a word you have prepared a table for us O oh god i pray that you may speak to me O oh lord that your servant is ready to hear your word minister to my life everlasting father speak to me O jehovah speak to my situation everlasting god in the mighty name of jesus christ we thank you you are such a gracious and loving father there is no one else like you we nuliwe na hata umidiwe upewe sifa milele na hata milele in the mighty name of jesus christ O god I saw the Lord and he answered me and sent me from my enemy the God surround he said he will deliver them will deliver them magnify the Lord with me come exalt his name together glorify the Lord with me Come exalt his name forever. Now, put your hands together as we welcome the minister of the world. Minister Sarah Waira is a girl that we know. She's looking good and she's for the world. Joining Form 3 now. She's joining Form 3 when they are going back to school. And uh, which school? She happened to have went to the prestigious schools in Kibu County, Melly Hill. That means she performed so well. Even in her exams, na tunamini hata kwa kuleta neno, ata ileta bilivyo. Karibu sana muhuduma, utulete neno. Karibu. Praise God. Praise God again. Changa mkeni. Praise God. Praise God again. When I say it's wonderful to be here, say it's nice to be here. Okay. It's wonderful to be here. It's wonderful to be here. It's nice to be here. Okay. So, uh, the sermon of today is the three powerful keys of prayer. And now you may sit down.
okay sometimes when we are going to pray we find that distractions come at that moment that moment when you have gone to the room or you are in a fellowship and you are praying the distractions just come okay this excessive distracting thought make it too heavy for heavenly ascension heavenly ascension is prayer is like climbing a mountain but when you are having very many distractions they make you too heavy the way that you cannot be in the uplifting of prayers and this and this appears when we are quiet enough you find that these distracting thoughts just appeared when you are you find that these distracting thoughts appear when you are going to pray. This is because you are never quiet enough for them to be revealed. And when you went to that room to pray, you are, there was silence and you are quiet. And then when, when you are silent and you are quiet, the distracting thoughts just come because you are never too quiet and you never notice them but they were always there so we have to find a solution to these distracting thoughts and that's why we are going to listen to the three powerful keys of prayer the first key is silence uh, let's open the bible to matthew chapter 6 verse 6 In Matthew 6, 6, the word says, But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father, who is, who is unseen. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Silence is practical. You have to shut that door. You communicate to your family members that you are going into a mood of silence. It is practical. And when you are having this silence, it will get rid of all outside distracting thoughts. But silence doesn't get rid of the inner turmoil. It doesn't get rid of the thoughts which are in the head, but it gets rid of the outside distractions. So when you are entering into this silence, you are supposed to pray to have the stillness. The Lord says countless of times in the Bible, be still. When you become still, your mind, the thoughts, the distracting thoughts will be shut off. And when they are shut off, you will come to a moment of focusing, focusing in the prayer, and you will get rid of the distracting thoughts that are outside, outside and those that are inside. Then uh, it says that... It says that you should go into a room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. This prayer is a private prayer. A private prayer is when it's personal. You are in that room alone, and you are with God. Now, when you are having a private prayer, it shows the faith you have in prayer. Because there is no one there to back you up. It's you and God. This private prayer shows that you believe in the prayer of the secret place. And the prayer of the secret place for the God who is unseen will answer those prayers in the outside and everyone will see them. And the second key of, the second powerful key in prayers is the prayer request. Uh, Philippians 4, 7. Philippians chapter 4, 6 to 7. Philippians 4, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything. Anxious is also worry. So do not worry about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Uh, God is telling us to pray about everything. And he's, he's telling us, don't worry, don't be anxious. Worry is the obsessing, uh, 
it's the obsessing of something. Like for example, it's an illusion of control. It's a pretense of control. You think maybe you are praying about something, but you fear that it's going to happen. So unashinda kuomba, kila moment, every time you're just praying and praying and praying about it, like maybe that thing is going to come after an hour. Now you're praying the whole hour. It's like you're not having trust in God. Worry is the way of the flesh. The flesh is the body. But the spirit, its way is prayer. And that's what you're supposed to do, to pray. Because pray is giving it to God, giving all your worries to God. The worries in our lives are these cares of the world, the responsibilities that you have. These are the worries that we have. And we are supposed to not choose the way of the flesh to worry, but you are supposed to choose the way of the spirit to pray. And worry shows the lack of trust in God, but praying shows the faith you have in Christ. Then it says that uh, in every situation, by prayer and petition, no petition is the prayer request, it's supplication, it's the prayer request that you have. When you are giving God the prayer request, it's like you are abandoning all the loads that are on your back and you are giving them to Jesus and you are becoming lighter and you are not having that heavy load. Uh, in Exodus, Exodus chapter 24, verse 12 to 18, we find that, we find that prayer is like climbing a mountain. And Moses was told by God, God wanted to speak to him. And he called him and told him to climb to the mountain. Prayer is like climbing up on a mountain. But when you are climbing up on a mountain and you have a heavy bag on your back, this bag is containing all the distractions, all the responsibilities that you have. Maybe you are a parent, maybe you are having a family, you need to have money and all that. All these cares of the world, all that worry is inside that bag. That bag is creeping, creeping you spiritually. Being crippled is when you, 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 don't ha you don't have the ability like to walk or move. So like spiritually, when you are having that heavy bag on your back, it's creeping in you. But when you are putting your prayer request to God, I've told you it's like unbundling all the things that you have and Jesus is taking them off your shoulder. But do you know what we do? When we are having that bag and we are climbing on that mountain, then we figure out to give the prayer request to God. When we are giving God those prayer requests and he's taking them off our shoulder, you know what we say? I'm feeling so free. I'm, I'm very light. There is no burden on me. What I'm going to do because I've reached the point of peace, I will go back down to the valley. You are climbing a mountain, but when Jesus took off those burdens, you said, now I'm free. Let me go down back the valley. Going down back the valley is when you are going back to your normal life. It's like you've forgotten what God has done. God did not remove that bag for you to go down back the valley. He removed that bag so you can climb higher to the highest height of prayer. To climb that mountain higher and higher. So when God is removing that, that bondage, that bag, those distracting thoughts, don't go back down to the valley. Climb higher and higher. And when you are climbing higher and higher, you're going to reach a point of peace. Peace is not the conclusion of prayer. Peace is the entry way to prayer. So when you receive that peace, continue climbing. Don't stop. Do you hear me? Don't stop. You climb and climb to the highest heights of mountains. And the third key for powerful prayers is worship. Worship. In Isaiah 26, 3. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. In verse 1, the Lord tells Isaiah, he tells the people to sing, to sing, uh, to sing songs of praise and worship. And in chapter 3, he says the promise, the promise of worship. The promise of worship is the steadfastness in Jesus. To be steadfast is to be firm, firmly planted to Jesus. So worship is the third key. When you reach that entryway of peace, start to worship. Worship God. Adore him for, all, for who he is. And don't forget, in Philippians 4, chapter 6, uh, we say that in thanksgiving, when you're going to offer everything to God, 
when you are going to tell him everything you pour out yourself, remember to come with thanksgiving. Telling him thank you for the things he has done and the things he's going to do. For the Lord never fails. The Lord never fails in our lives. So he says in Philippians 4 verse 7 that you will receive peace. And this is what I was telling you. After putting this prayer request to God, you are receiving the peace. And the peace is the entryway to prayers. Now when you are worshipping, you will be uh, captured to the glory of the Lord. You're going to be captured and to be raptured to his glory. And you're going to know who God is. And God, Jesus Christ, when he ascended to heaven, he never let, uh, left us as orphans. He gave us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit you received when you got born again. He's inside you. Get to know him for he loves you so much. He wants you to be in fellowship with him. And in worship, you can get to be in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit aids us to pray to the Father and to the Son. He aids us to pray to the Father in Jesus' name. So when you are in the, in, the, in, the, in the place of worship, now call upon the Holy Spirit to teach you, to be your teacher, to have fellowship with him. He's your helper, he's your counselor, and he's your guide. And those were the three powerful keys of prayer. Yes. Hallelujah. Wow. God bless you and increase you. Hallelujah. Si munasikia kuna kitu hapo? Eh? Eh ndio maana tunawapea nafasi. Na ili wakaweze kunena. Hallelujah. God bless you so much. She's Stella. Mkumbuke Stella. Waira. And by the way, where is mom today? Mom yuko. Mama Stella. Eh wale ambao mna Kumbuka the other side wakati kulikuwa na uh, Natoka pande hile ni jamii ya uh, Waira's family The man who is called Mr. Kamau But late, she, he is now late Na uyo ni msichana wake wapili Wapili wa matatu Watatu Na tunashukuru mungu sana ni kwa sababu yake Hallelujah Tulianzana na wawo wakiwa wadogo Hallelujah Ukisikia kinena hiyo, ni yale ambao pia tunawafunza na yale pia wanatia bidi pale. Ambapo wakiwa silence in prayer. God bless you so much. Tutasimama tena. Kwa sababu. Sawa. Yeah, our Asha Peter. Ah, thank you. Ni lazima atamuhudumia. <laughs> Ako pande hii. <laughs> ah, pole. Anaendelea ku na tunashukuru kujua mambo mawili matatu. A quick reminder, a quick reminder. Kamiti ambayo inaanda arusi ya ndugu yetu rale. Rale. Yes, kamiti ambayo inaanda arusi ya ndugu yetu Rari na na Evelyn tafadhali tunaombwa kupatana mahali ambapo tulipatana chairman akiwa hapa na ili tulikubaliana kwamba tutakutana siku hiyo ya leo na ili tukaweze kuendeleza mambo mawili matatu. And now without wasting time. Uh, she is very new in uh, our church. Lakini amekuwa mhuduma na msaada mkubwa sana. Wakati tuliposema kama kidat, I mean uh, darasa la wana Sunday school tunahitaji walimu, she did not hesitate to join us na akakubali kuendeleza ama kuendelea kushikilia mahali wengine walipokuwa manake mwanzo wa mwaka huu we suffered a loss na si loss ya kifo ni loss tu mzuri ya walimu wachache ambao wali wengine wali travel na wengine wakawa hawajaweza kufika kwa mambo mawili matatu but she decided that the ministry will not remain just like that vacant akasema ya kwamba atatujoin Na amekuwa ni msaada mkubwa Ile kazi umeona ikifanyo hapa na Adventurous She has been playing a very big role In uh, helping the Adventurous group Tutapata nafasi ya kuombewa sisi wote Na hili mukaweza kutujua vizuri So I want us to put our hands together As we welcome our second minister Madam Purity Thank 
Karibu, karibu, karibu. Na walimu tunakuanga smart hivyo. Uh, walimu tunakuanga smart like that. And she's looking good. And I believe and trust she's going to bring the word of God. Uh, kama vile roho wabana atakavyo msaidia. Karibu sana purity and bring us the word. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. We remain seated in the presence of God. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Yesu asifiwe. Yes, my name is Purity. Actually, it's my first time to stand here. Oh, it's hot. I never knew that I was this shy. I'm trying to look at faces and I'm like, guy. Thank you so much, Stella, for a good word. Actually, I know what Stella will come to speak. And I don't have something different from what she has spoken. I've only come to rubber stamp. Yes. Yes, uh, I'm born again. Sijali, I'm just trying to find my ground. I want us to read uh, from the book of 2 Kings, chapter number 2. 2 Kings chapter number 2 from verse 19. It's a story that you all know. It's not new to us. It's a short, short very short story. And uh, yes, <clears throat> chapter 19. The men of the city said to Elisha, Look, our Lord, this town is well situated, as you can see, but the water is bad. And the land is unproductive. And then this is Elisha talking. Bring me a new bowl, he said, and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went out to the spring and threw the salt into it, saying, This is what the Lord says. Amen. This is what the Lord says. And this is the word that I'm bringing today. That in the midst of everything, this is what the Lord is saying. And my topic, I'll say, it's not a topic, Mzuri, but I'll put it as keeping hope alive. Keeping hope alive. This is what the Lord says. I have healed this water. Never again will it cause death or make the land unproductive to touch here. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. Use me as your mouthpiece to speak to your people as you intended. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, um, with the word that you've read, it is a story that you all know. It reached a time in Israel that there was so a lot of suffering in the land. I was, as I was trying to read the book of Second, actually I've been trying to look for a word for today. Nasikuwa nimepata till yesterday and I remember teacher Patrick calling me and I told him by the time morning if ike, I'll have something. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. And I've been reading through the book of Kings and Chronicle and one thing that really outstood about these two books is the sovereignty nature of God. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. That God is so, so as the sovereignty of God. What do I mean by sovereignty of God? It is that God that existed pre-Genesis 1.1. Because before Genesis 1, 1, God existed. And that's why he had to be there to say, let us create. Let there be born. And that God is the God of pre, the God of intra, and the God of eternity. Eternity is after no revelation. And the, uh, this, this thing, when I was reading this, this, this uh, chapter, or rather this verse that you've read, I was seeing how people were suffering. And I was equating it to our day life. Truth be told, people are suffering out there. People are suffering such a way that you remember that time before COVID came and everybody was into their normal businesses. And when we had the first time we heard about COVID, we used to think it is the disease of the rich, actually, the disease of the Western people, like West. But now, when it came to our country, everything came to a standstill. You remember the time lockdown came, people were retrenched, people lost their job, and that is where most problems began. We've seen people committing suicide, marriages breaking down, 
people killing each other, a lot of homicide going on. And I was asking God, as in, with all this thing, because I remember before COVID, when COVID now came, everybody turned to the church. Amen? Kill them too. They turned to the church. Because the church was the only hope for the nation. The church was the only hope for this disease to be taken away. And then comes a time where the minister said that there shall be lockdown and the church was closed. And the hope that was there for everybody, it kind of dropped down and everybody was like, yo, now what else for this? But it is the same situation that was there. You know when the waters are bitter, when there is no water, the source have been cut, mean there is no life. They are saying that the land was unproductive because water defies life. And when there's, there's no water, like when you go to Northeastern there, their main issue is because it is a dry land. Two of us. It is very dry. Because I want to believe, kama kuna nyashanga uko, there will, didn't be cases like, oh, there is drought in Marsabit, oh, CG people are dying out of hunger. No. Because again, water signifies life. And these guys went to Elisha and they told Elisha because they had, they had heard about Elisha. Remember the predecessor of Elisha was Elijah, right? And he was doing miracles. He was doing things that people knew that this man that had been left behind is only the hope that we have. The same way the church was the only hope. And today, I just want to talk to the student. By the way, I'm, I'm a student in adventurous class. Only that when they stand, I am seated. And when they're, I'm standing as their teacher, and um, I'm discovering myself in a new way. I've come to realize it's only in that class where you can be in your Kenyaji nature, that organic nature of you, because like uh, our elder has said, children don't fake. You know, they'll come and tell you when you try to talk to them to tell you, teacher me I didn't take breakfast. You know, they don't lie. They're very innocent and you get to know, you get to understand yourself in a different way, something that you could not do. Praise God. So, when these people knew that Elisha was their only hope, they hesitate. Bring it to our current situation. Vijana Wengi. So many of us are into secularism. Many of us are into drugs, two of us. There's a lot of any crazy things going out there. And we wonder, where did we go wrong? Could it be the parenthood, like the parenting nature? Probably the way, you remember wakati kulifungile and there were so many teenage pregnancies. Yeah? And everybody was like, no, this student should be in school. Others were like, uh, it is the parenting, like parents have failed. And me was trying to say, Kilamtu was trying to put after a blame game. Just the same way these people were doing. They, they had their own reasons as to why the water is bitter. They had their own reasons as to why like the water is this bad. And, but, but one thing that stood out is they knew there is a solution. And they came to Elisha and told, man of God, the water is bitter. The land is no longer productive. Before the water was bad, the land used to be productive. Mean, meaning there, were, there used to be life. Life was there. But after Majimia Rebika, the supply was cut and there was no life anymore. And these people came to Elisha and Elisha told them that bring me a bowl. They brought him a bowl. He took the salt near the thing, and then he went down to the stream and he purified the water. And the Bible records still today that the water is pure. The land is productive. Church, we are that salt. Church, we are the only hope of this nation. You know, like right now we are in that, uh, the political aura, you know, there's a lot of euphoria and everybody is trying to take sides. Doesn't matter which side you are. But when you interact with people, 90% of people had their, have their own opinion on politics. You go try to reason with someone, something probably, something different from politics, and you, you get to understand that politics control our day-to-day -day life. 
He controls our order of today. But in the midst of that, in the midst of all that thing that is happening out there, the church is the only hope. And how can we raise the bar? Apart from preaching peace, preaching loving one another, loving our neighbor and all that, apart from being that, what can the church do to withstand all this? What can the church do? Because the waters out there, it is bad. The land out there, it is unproductive. What do I mean by unproductive? We've had people, you know, our leaders, wanatoa matusimbayambaya and all that stuff, meaning that the political land is unproductive. When we go down to our houses, vijana wetu, the teenager, our young men, it is unproductive. We cannot sit back and watch this happening. So the church has to raise the bar. The church, we are the only hope for this nation. It is not all about saying love one another. It is okay. That is something that usually happens every single day. But when you narrow down to yourself, you are asking, will I still love this person when he is taking the other side of politics? Will I still love this person when he is on a different opinion from mine? That is how it narrowed down to us that I have a place to, pray, to play in the society. I have a role to play in the society. And I was, as I was talking about the sovereignty of God, you know, God is not controlled by times and seasons. He's a God that is not, you know, the political season will not control our God. The COVID season did not control our God. And that's why you could see the minister, Ali Kuja Katuambia, we have to sanitize, we, ma we must mask up social and physical distancing. And again, some days back, he's back again and say, it is not mandatory. You just wake up one morning, I was, I was seeing some memes, at kuna mtu yake ya mask imefika asubui. And people are, you know, there are a lot of memes going on and everything. But you get to understand that our God is not a God of season. He lives in and out of season. And when I say he's a God of pre-Genesis 1-1, because that is how, where we start the whole of this thing. Eh? He lived before Genesis. He's the God that is intra, meaning he's living in this season. And even after this season... He will still live. It means it's the overarching orchestration of all that happens in, pre, in, and after. That is in eternity. And if he's that God that lives, you know, that, that God that lives in all this season, I have to raise the bar as a church. You know, the church is me and you. It's not about the building. I have to raise the bar as myself. Even when you feel like God is doing nothing, when you pray, probably because of the political, whatever, or because we prayed because of COVID, right? We prayed as a church. But sometimes you reach that point that you're praying and nothing is working out. You pray for your family, nothing is working out. You pray for the student, nothing is working out. You pray for the teenager, nothing is working out. But I want to tell you that even that period, because our God is so sovereign, even in that period, when you feel like God is doing nothing, imagine he's busy crafting chapter and chapter of the stories of your life. Let me take that again. There are days that we pray, right? Like just whatever Stella was saying, you've locked yourself in a room, you've detached yourself from the touch of reality, you just that want that me time, you just want to feel God in a different way, but still you feel this prayer is not going anywhere. And the more you pray, probably the more things get worse. There are people who got retrenched when this disease came. There are people who lost their jobs. There are people... Actually, out there, you know me, where I work, I get to interact so much with people. I'm not a psychologist, but I get people to come and probably share their issues. You know, they find that when I share with you my issues, you don't know me, I don't know you. So just, just looking for somewhere to just let it out. And I get to ask myself, hey, yo, like outside here, things are really tough. You know, being, being healthy, it means you're healthy physically, you're healthy mentally, you're healthy spiritually. Like, it is an all-round bond. 
and you get to understand. You might see Purity walking out there. She's dressly smart or probably she's, she's in a happy mood. But there is that period where Purity called herself in a meeting and she's so alone. She gets to break down and feel like nothing is working out. Let me tell you something. When you reach that point like these guys did, uh, these people, they had no hope. There was no hope for tomorrow. They had no future. The land was unproductive. This generation is quite a point of eradication. When you reach to that period in your life, God is busy crafting chapters and chapters. In those details in your life, he's busy writing a new page for you. And it will only be up chapters and chapters in your life. Because he's a sovereign God. So to top up on what Stella has said, I want to add three more secrets. Because as a church, we have to up it. And to add these secrets, they are the secrets of prayer. Because apart from saying I love you, apart from telling your neighbor I care about you, apart from encouraging your neighbor, we still there is more to be done. There is more to be done for our church. There is more to be done for this generation. By the way, I usually tell my, my students, we are the best people that could have lived in this generation, in this time and season. Because God knew it is only us that can handle whatever is going on. This era of social media and everything, you are so exposed. It is only us that could have handled this generation. Amen. So I just want... There is more because the church need to up how we pray. And I want to rubber stamp what she said. And the first secret, the first secret, you have to present a heartfelt prayer. A heartfelt prayer. Because I've realized many other times we, you know, every Sunday there's a morning devotion. Some of us come here because it's a routine. And others, I don't want to say they are here, but others, they are like, umelala, you are bored, you are so stressed in the house, so you have to come to the house of God, hear someone sing from you. You see, that can distracting musical voice. You just want peace. There is a difference between praying and having a heartfelt prayer. Remember Hannah. Hannah used to pray in Shiloh, right? She used to pray daily. Alikuwanaenda pale, anapiga maumbi yake, she used to pray, but one day, one day when she went there, she made a heartfelt prayer. That prayer, it is the one that distracted the heaven until the priest could notice her. Early in the morning, because this prayer was not just talking, it was not just like any, any, any normal crying, it was a cry from the heart. It was an earnest prayer. Praying from deep within. It doesn't matter what you're saying, but it is your soul connecting to heaven. This is so intimate in such a way, she couldn't even utter a word, but even the priest could think she's drunk. Another example is the example of Jesus at Gethsemane. You remember that prayer that Jesus made? You remember that prayer? Where he prayed until his own sweat drip down like blood and that is the prayer because he was praying telling god please take this cup from me i cannot take this anymore but after praying that prayer he was ready for the cross an honest heartfelt prayer you remember ishmael in the desert with Haggai? both of them cried you remember their water got finished and her guy, Akaeka Mtoto Mbali, and she started crying to God. She cried, and the baby cried. But the Bible says that the heavens, or rather God, heard the cry of the small lad. God heard the cry of the small lad. It is the cry of this baby that touched heaven. And in that, I just want us to read a verse. Uh, from the book of James, James chapter number 5, verse 16. Because you have to connect. You, you, we are used to praying Kamakawaida because I remember sometime, you know, like me, I've been brought up in a Corino family. You, you see those religious a Corino family? And I have my small brother with me. You start kindly, Fanya Ivi. That is our last born brother. And we've been brought up in a Corino family. Like, 
Durban. And you know, it was a routine. Like we have to hold hand before bedtime and pray. We have to, you know, you have to pray for food. So there's a time I went home and, and it, food was served. And I was like, this food is blessed in Jesus' name as I was eating. And my dad was there, called like, hi. No, I go here. As in, because them, they believe, you know. And I was like, no, as in this, it's, it's a different one. And by the things are done differently in my family. So when you come to visit my family, expect, you know how a Corino do things. Things are run dif differently, by the way. If you ask someone to pray for food, it might get cold. <laughs> And sometimes they pray and that is the time the Holy Spirit is talking and you'll hear someone stand up and say, God is saying, nah, 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 nah. yeah, and, and I'm very much okay with it. I'm very <laughs> so, and of course, during Kegosho, it will take like a whole three hours because one hour Kegosho and two hours it's listen what the heavens want, you know, the way forward and all that. Yes, and, and, and it, it is in us. I've been brought up that way. Actually, nilizaliwa mamangu, babangu, akiwa na kiremba. I agree, but si kufungwa. He is a man who believed like salvation ya mtu binafsi. So in my family, nobody, nobody. And he never forced me to, to go to his church. Actually, when you to grow, I went to ile independent ya ushago. And then, wakati uh, lijijua kidogo, nikanza kuenda KAG. And now I'm here in worldwide. See, I nimekuwa hapa kule. No, because I believe that salvation is not about the church. Being born again, it's not where you fellowship. It's about your relationship with God. So James chapter number 5 verse 16. Therefore confess your sin to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer... I wish I can get the King James Version one, but it's okay. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Verse 16. Confess your fault uh, one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer. This is a key word. The effectual fervent prayer. This is an honest, heartfelt prayer. An honest prayer. You're getting intimate with what you're doing. Amen. And then number two points, because I'm continuing with her, her points. Eh? So if you're writing, you just continue. Number two point, it's, uh, it's having the access code. You have, you go to have an access code. You go to have an access code. You just don't go before God and pray just evo kuomba tu kama kawaida. No. It is not. Yeah, let's stop making it a normality to just pray. You go to have, to have, you go to have an access code which is Jesus Christ. Our access code is Jesus Christ. Can I have John 14, 13? By then I'm Alizia. <laughs> John 14, 13. And whatsoever she, sorry, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, in my name, that will be done, that the Father may be glorified in who? In the Son. So what is the access code in this case? It is Jesus. It is Jesus. And that's why when you got born again, because I remember when I was getting born again, it was, you know, in high school, we used to get born again every weekend challenge. <laughs> so, Nikki toka nyumbani, me, me, I think Nikki Zaliwa, I think I was born like, because Mimi ni mepele kwa kanisa, ni, 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 ni. But every weekend challenge, the pastor could come, preach, and, uh, you know, ile at a call. Because roho ameongea, and you go and again you get born again. I don't want to say that we got on a backslide in between, but another church come with a weekend challenge, and then you feel, hey, this pastor is stronger than whoever came last time. So I think this grace is too much. So you go again, you get born again for the second time. If from form one come to form four, and then again one is in campus, you know, campus you're realizing yourself, and in campus. You know, being brought in that Akorino strict family, when you're sent to the shop and uh, you una interact na watu uko, dad is like, huh? And mom is like, tebe, You get. So, 
in, in campus, I felt I was so free. Platform, sir, so to be able to minister in the mighty of Jesus. That which you have installed in them in the mighty name of Jesus. We remember all our children, oh dear Lord in your presence in the mighty name of Jesus. Today they have ministered unto us, oh dear Lord. You've used them as vessels of honor in the mighty name of Jesus. You have given them as a gift unto your kingdom. We thank you and worship you. We praise you and honor you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for the retro one for the teenagers, for their teachers. God, continue blessing them, continue anointing them, continue giving them a revelation, illumination of your word in the mighty name of Jesus. That Father, they are going to continue serving you with all their strength in the mighty name of Jesus. Even them that are in schools, we pray for your grace in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that Heavenly Father, you are going to continue giving them wisdom and understanding in their schools in the mighty name of Jesus. You're going to continue leading them and ushering them, oh dear Lord, and to greater hate in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh my Father and my God, we pray that these children are not going to be a disappointment to their parents and to this nation, but they shall rise up to the occasion and to this generation because they have the best that you gave for this generation and in this generation generation in the mighty name of Jesus. May your glory Lord be manifested through the little ones in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. We worship you. We praise you our Father. For your mighty and precious and wonderful our dear Lord and Savior. Ah uh -huh. 
solution of every need in this house in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that the spirit of the Lord is addressing issues here in the name of Jesus. The situations that are difficult, situations that have lasted for a long time are being resolved in this house in the mighty name of Jesus. Sicknesses and diseases are being cured in the mighty name of Jesus. We believe that Heavenly Father, you are changing even situations and cases, oh dear Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Just as your word came, that we must keep the hope alive. Lord, we want to speak hope to the hopeless situations in the mighty name of Jesus. Even those that my father and my God are struggling, they can barely feed themselves and their families because of the economical hard times. We pray in the name of Jesus. Now that we know that we do not operate on the basis of the economies of the other, we believe that my father you are addressing their situations in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for financial breakthroughs, oh dear Lord, my father and my God, when your servant Elijah was in the desert and there was famine, oh dear Lord, you fed him, oh dear Lord, through the parts of the air. I pray that Lord you may send even your angel unto your servants here that are struggling in that area in the mighty name of Jesus that father you're going to feed families you're going to resurrect families here in the mighty name of Jesus and we pray that my father every business every work that is represented in this house is getting a new lease of life in the mighty name of Jesus those that are at the verge of collapsing. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. You are a God of hope and you have said you know the thoughts that you have for us, oh dear Lord. And they are not evil thoughts. They are to give us a hope and a future. We pray in the name of Jesus. Those businesses, they are resurrecting. They are rising up. They are coming up again in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we believe there shall be testimonies uh, of things that you have raised up, uh, of things that my father and my God that were buried uh, and that are coming out, oh dear Lord, uh, even better and strongly in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, we will be hearing testimonies uh, of doors that you have opened, uh, of sicknesses and diseases uh, that you have cured uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, we thank you and worship you. For we know that your spirit is here and your power is here and the anointing of the Holy Spirit is here in the mighty name of Jesus and things are not remaining the same again for you are the same yesterday, today and forevermore and we believe Lord what you did in the past you are still doing today and you are going to do it in the future in the mighty name of Jesus we thank you and worship you and glorify your name 
for we know that we are all blessed and we know that we are all remembered and we know that we are all favored and we know that as even as we part we are going home with hope that you are doing something and you have already done something about our situations in the mighty name of Jesus. May the joy of salvation be restored in our midst in the mighty name of Jesus. May the peace that surpasses human understanding be upon us in the name of Jesus. May we see you in every aspect in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you and worship you in Jesus mighty name we pray. And everybody shout Amen. Everybody shout a better amen. I can't hear a better amen. Shout a louder amen. And if you are excited to be in the house of the Lord, just give him a celebration in the name of Jesus. Come on, I can't hear you. Give him a shout of praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Tell your neighbor, the kingdom of God, kingdom of God belongs to the little children. <laughs> so ask them, are you a child of God? Or oh, they are saying they are an adult. <laughs> there is no place for adults in the kingdom of God. For Jesus said, for the kingdom of God is for such little children. That if you do not behave as a child, the way our children have taught us here and one of the characteristics we are told are that they are very innocent. They speak out, they do it. And whatever they do, even what they are doing here, they were giving it their, yes. their best. Yeah, they were giving it their best. So even as we celebrate God once again with the attitude of children and uh, with the spirit of children, I want us to do it better. Not care what your neighbor is thinking or feeling or imagining even if you have a base I said for men I know men struggle with it whenever we say we celebrate we say, no, I, I, I want us to try just try yeah? just try and I want us once more time to give a celebration unto Jesus like never before in Jesus come on give him a shout of praise Jesus mighty name. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's more like it. Eh? That's more like it. Uh, we are excited to be in the house of God. We want to give our tithes and offerings. And therefore, if you are giving your tithe, you can come forward even as we receive them in the presence of the Lord. And uh, the other offerings, we will bless them and uh, later we'll give in the presence of the Lord. And I believe uh, uh, the teenagers that were leading us here can lead us one children's song, eh? Uh, yeah, one children's song, eh? I, 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 I like the other, the, the, the Father Abraham, eh? That, that one is the one that I know since our days, the Father Abraham. And we are really going to do the Father Abraham, eh? Who can do it better? Huh? Cindy? Yes. All right, where is she? Yeah, even as we are giving, yeah, and uh, you can come with your colleagues, the teenagers here, so that we will see tongues out and what, 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 as we sing Father Abraham, as we give our offerings in the presence of the Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Can we come, those that are giving their tithes, those that are giving their tithes, you can come forward, even as we pray and receive them in the presence of the Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. 